everyone. Hello and welcome to Mary Live. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli. My friends in Jesus and Mary, on October 13th, the church commemorates, at least in a general fashion, the great solar miracle of Fatima. In fact, St. Paul VI wrote an, an apostolic letter called Signum Magnum, the great sign, uh, to commemorate what takes place historically in front of 70,000 onlookers in the small town of Fatima. This event and this message uh, gives great importance to us in our present historical moment. Sometimes we focus on the miracle and we forget the message which the miracle is called to reinforce, to confirm. So I'm going to go to the official memoirs of uh, Sister Lucia, and I want to read her account uh, directly from her memoirs of what takes place on October 13th. And we're going to see that later apparitions are going to confirm the urgency and the importance of this Fatima event and its underlying message. From her memoirs, it starts as Our Lady appears. Lucia says, what do you want of me, Our Lady? I want to tell you to have them build a chapel here in my honor. I am the Lady of the Rosary. Let them continue to say the Rosary every day. The war is going to end, and the soldiers will soon return to their homes. Lucia, I have many things to ask of you. The cure of some sick persons, the conversion of some sinners. Our Lady, some yes, others no. It is necessary that they amend their lives and ask pardon for their sins. Her face became graver as she continued, Let them offend our Lord no more, for he is already much offended. And opening her hands, she made the light emerging from then ascend to the sun, to where the sun ought to be. And while she was arising, her own radiance continued, shining towards the sun. When Our Lady disappeared in the immense dis distance of the sky, next to the sun we saw Saint Joseph holding the child Jesus and Our Lady dressed in white with a blue mantle. Saint Joseph and the Christ child seemed to be blessing the world, making the sign of the cross. Shortly after this vision had vanished, I saw Our Lord and Our Lady who reminded me of Our Lady of Sorrows. Our Lord was blessing the world just the same way as St. Joseph. This vision vanished also, and it seemed to me I again saw Our Lady dressed as Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Now, then, as we know based on the historic accounts, we have the solar miracle. The, the sun spins in the sky, it gives off colors, uh, and it comes rushing towards the people. The people go prostrate, some of them confessing their sins openly because they're afraid it's the end of the world. Now, before we get to the full meaning of that sun coming rushing towards the ground and then uh, returning to its place in the sky, I want to focus in on those three visions that happen while this uh, is taking place. One is uh, St. Joseph and the child Jesus. St. Joseph blesses the world. Uh, during this year of St. Joseph, we can't forget the importance of St. Joseph as patron of the Church and special patron of the Holy Father to pray for the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary and everything that concerns the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, including the proclamation of a fifth and final Marian dogma, for which we'll discuss in a moment. Second vision is Our Lady of Sorrows. Well, Our Lady of Sorrows is the devotional image of Mary as the co-redemptrix that continual and perennial doctrine of the Church that Mary uniquely participates with and under Jesus, the only divine Redeemer, in the historic accomplishment of redemption. And after that is done, uh, as St. John Paul II uh, tells us, her role as co-redemptrix doesn't cease with the glorification of her son at Calvary, but she distributes the graces of the redemption in her role as mediatrix of all graces, and protects us in a role as advocate. Well, there's a third image. That's the image of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. She's holding the scapular. Uh, this also portends the promise of eternal life, since the scapular gives us a promise of eternal life for those who faithfully wear the scapular. Now, 
a dear friend who we lost uh, this year, Dr. Courtney Bartholomew, a, a friend to the international Marian community, a great scholar, a great scientist, one of the original discoverers of AIDS, and also a great lover of Our Lady. He really had a golden pen and wrote many texts on Our Lady. But as a Catholic scientist, he had a certain interpretation of the sun propelling towards the earth, and his interpretation was as follows. That the sun is an ongoing hydrogen bomb, and the fact that it was propelling towards the earth gives indication of a potential nuclear disaster, a potential nuclear war. Well, it's interesting that in 1985, Sister Lucia would say that had John Paul II not consecrated the world, inclusive of Russia, to her Immaculate Heart, that there would have been a nuclear outbreak. Well, we're going to see this further confirmed in a message that comes from Akita. So we have an interesting bridge of 28 years from Fatima. This is 1917. 28 years from Fatima, we have the reported apparitions of Our Lady of All Nations, the Lady of All Nations, in Amsterdam. And that begins in 1945. Now, I say reported because, as many of you know, the Amsterdam apparitions had received formal approval uh, by Bishop Joseph Punt on May 31st of 2002 with a constat de supernatural etate, essentially that these messages consist of a supernatural origin. And it's important in our, in our conversation uh, today because she appears as the Lady of All Nations. This is the image uh, in which she appears according to the reported apparitions at Amsterdam. I say reported because on December 30th of 2020, the new bishop uh, issued a new statement, which according to his statement, returns the status of the apparitions to a 1974 Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith position, which is a position of non constat de supernaturalitate. And be, sure, my, be clear here, my friends, that's not a position of condemnation. We have a category for that. It's called constat de non supernaturalitate. These, these do not consist uh, of a supernatural origin. But non constat is a middle category where uh, it states that the church has not confirmed the authenticity, but uh, the investigation can continue. So the 1974 statement said that there could not be a promulgation of the messages under the auspices of devotion, but that the image can remain, the prayer of the Lady of All Nations can remain, and also uh, you can have prayer days uh, in honor of uh, the, the Lady of All Nations in this new, more limited dimension. Well, it's important to note that according to these reported messages, it is a, a solemn proclamation of a dogma, the dogma of Mary Co-Redemptrix, Mediatrix of All Graces and Advocate, that would save the world from a world catastrophe. Now, once again, we will be entirely obedient to the uh, December 30th, 2020 uh, new statement uh, it is a, an unusual situation where you have a new bishop that makes a statement that goes contrary to a formal former bishop, especially when we're talking about a formal statement of authenticity. But that's a question for Ken Law. Uh, our response will be a response, of course, of obedience uh, at this time in the process. Now, why is it relevant to today? Well, because on October 13th, 1973, in a formally approved apparition, the apparition of Our Lady at Akita, Japan. These are a series of uh, locutions and mystical phenomena that happen to an image of the Lady of All Nations as it's conveyed in a statue, a wooden statue, which would weep 101 times, not just 101 tears, but on 101 different occasions and the spiritual director of the visionary, Sister Agnes Sasagawa, would state that this is a continuation of the theme of Mary as the co-redemptrix, that her tears are tears of suffering in light of the, the sins of humanity. So Akita on October 
13th of 1973, would relay the following message. This, this is a message from Our Lady uh, to the image of the Lady of All Nations as, again, it's contained in a wooden statue, which, which then uh, produces you know, supernatural phenomena, which, by the way, was tested by the universities uh, in Japan, and the tears were found to be of true uh, human origin, uh, a, a, a tear, human tear DNA. What does Our Lady say on the anniversary of October 13th in 1973? Let me read to you, and again, this is from an approved apparition, the apparition of Our Lady of Akita. The message states, quote, As I told you, if men do not repent and better themselves, the Father will inflict a terrible punishment on all humanity. It will be a punishment greater than the deluge, such as one will never been seen before. Fire will fall from the sky and wipe out a great part of humanity, the good as well as the bad, sparing neither priests nor faithful. The survivors will find themselves so desolate that they will envy the dead. The only arms which will remain for you will be the rosary and the sign left by my son. Each day recite the prayers of the rosary. With the rosary, pray for the Pope, the bishops, and priests. The work of the devil will infiltrate even into the church in such a way that one will see cardinals opposing cardinals, bishops against bishops. The priests who venerate me will be scorned and opposed by their confreres, churches and altars sacked. The church will be full of those who accept compromises, and the demon will press many priests and consecrated souls to leave the service of the Lord. The demon will be especially implacable against souls consecrated to God. The thought of the loss of so many souls is the cause of my sadness. If sins increase in number and gravity, there will be no longer pardon for them. With courage, speak to your superior. He will know how to encourage each one of you to pray and to accomplish works of reparation. Uh, Sister Agnes responds, It is Bishop Ito who directs, excuse me, this is Our Lady, it is Bishop Ito who directs your community. And she smiled and then said, You still have something to ask. Today is the last day I will speak to you in living voice. From now on, you will obey the one sent to you and your superior. Pray very much the prayers of the rosary. I alone am able to save you from the calamities that approach. Those who place their confidence in me will be saved. Now that's an extraordinarily pregnant message. Uh, but just to highlight, Bishop Ito, who Our Lady mentions, brought this message before Cardinal Ratzinger and his secret the, the secretary, Bishop Ito, Francis Fukushima, uh, relays this directly. And Cardinal Ratzinger read the message and then gave permission for it to be released. And that also comes with the permission that Bishop Ito had to declare the, the, the mystical phenomena at Akita to be of a supernatural origin. So first of all, we have to note to a certain undeniable connection between the now reported uh, apparitions of Amsterdam, uh, where the image of the Lady of All Nations is revealed, and the statue of Our Lady of Amsterdam, which then speaks and is an instrument for this supernatural event. Uh, I think the question of logic uh, would, would, would bring up the highly improbability of heaven using an image from a false apparition site to be the foundation of an authentic apparition. Well, that's a later discussion. Uh, and the connection between Amsterdam and Akita, again, historically, uh, cannot be denied in light of the fact that it's an image of the Lady of All Nations in Akita that, that is the, the means by which this message is conveyed. You, actually, you also have uh, 28 years from Fatima to Amsterdam and 28 years from Amsterdam to Akita, which is typically known as a lunar cycle. And as Our Lady is, is under the image of the moon, uh, there would be a beautiful significance to her coming up during this 28-year lunar cycle in uh, messages important for the world. In any case, my friends, 
the message I just read, is the fulfillment of the Fatima message. There's no coincidence that it's October 13th, 1973, where, their message is, where this, when this message is given. And we see now uh, the partial fulfillment of Akita in a way like never before in modern history, we have in a visible public manner, cardinal versus cardinal and bishop versus bishop. Of course, we always keep our fidelity on the rock of our fidelity to the vicar of Christ. The message of a warning, which he says is greater than the deluge, greater than the flood, uh, in which fire falls from the sky. How do we take that? Well, we should take it as an authentic message from the mother who loves us. If it causes fear alone, it defeats the purpose. If it encourages us to do what she asks us to do at both Fatima on October 13, 1917, and Akita, on October 13, 1973, then we're taking it in a positive, proper manner. It should encourage us with a peaceful urgency to pray the rosary, perhaps like we've never done it before. Now, some might say, I, I don't like the rosary, and, and that's a longer question, but I would say, this isn't about feelings, my friends. This is about obeying the mother. I encourage you to pray the rosary like never before. Sister Agnes was interviewed in 1995, and she was asked, Sister Agnes again being the visionary of the mystical phenomena of Akita, she was asked whether the great calamity could be avoided entirely, and her answer was no, but that it could be mitigated. That means it can be lessened. So our responsibility is not to figure out the massive big picture and the timing, etc., our responsibility is to obey. Our Lady has given us two messages calling us to pray the rosary against a world catastrophe, Fall, fire falling from the sky, uh, that which well might indicate a potential nuclear disaster in light of the Fatima message. And we're called to do this in a way that perhaps uh, is encouraging a new generosity for each one of us. If we haven't been praying the rosary, really, I beg you in Our Lady's name, pick up the beads. It's time to daily pray the rosary as she asks at Fatima so many times. Her title at Fatima is Our Lady of the Rosary, not Our Lady of Fatima. And you heard the message of Akita where she says, the means, the, the only arms, the only weapons left are the sign of the sun, which either means the Eucharist or some type of visible sign at the apparition site, and clearly the rosary. Now, I encourage you also to pray the prayer of the Lady of All Nations. The prayer was approved in the December 30th, 2020 statement by the bishop, the new bishop of Amsterdam. And so we can and we should pray the prayer. I personally have a great faith that the prayer is a powerful preparation for the proclamation of the dogma. And you don't need a private revelation to encourage you to understand that when we recognize Our Lady for her roles as the spiritual mother of all peoples, as the co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate, that that in itself can be the means by which Our Lady fully exercises those roles on our behalf now. Now, why do I say we don't need a private revelation? Because the founder of the movement for the Fifth Marian Dogma, Cardinal Mercy, back in 1915, said the same thing then. If we acknowledge Our Lady's roles, she can fully exercise those roles to bring peace to the world. So that's a movement that's been at the heart of the church for over a hundred years. So please, pray the rosary. Be more generous with praying the rosary. Uh, Our Lady describes uh, about an unceasing praying of the rosary. Pray it as often as you can, as well as you can. Also pray the prayer of the Lady of All Nations. You can look it up. You can do a Google search. Uh, if you need prayer cards, you can contact us at mary at motherofallpeoples.com. We'll send them free anywhere in the world. We have them in English and Spanish. It's time to be awakened by the great message of Fatima and the warning of Akita that much depends on our response. Let's respond generously. Let's obey our good mother. And let's pray also the prayer of the Lady of All Nations, 
And I conclude with that prayer now. As we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, send now your Spirit over the earth. Let the Holy Spirit live in the hearts of all nations, that they may be preserved from degeneration, disasters, and war. May the Lady of all nations, the Blessed Virgin Mary, be our advocate. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for being with us with Mary Live. God bless you all.